If there was one brief and immediate answer I should give without any hesitation to the question, what is the Bible? It would be, it's a story. I would then add that it's the kind of story that will influence you and lead you to make up your mind. When you've heard it or read it or seen the point of the story, then you have to do something about it. You can't just sit on the fence. Remember William Tyndale. He gave his life after much suffering to get Christian scripture, which was beyond the ordinary person, into the native language of the English. He believed, and rightly, that if the ploughboy could read the scripture or have it read to him in his native language, he would both understand and have the real possibility of experiencing, developing and nurturing faith. There was no thought that the Bible had to be without any error of any kind to accomplish this. The Bible is unique in that it mediates the word that creates faith. That was all is needed to do. Tyndale wanted his readers to have the opportunity that his translation provided to open the way for them for faith. It has so often done that and continues to do that. The light of his peoples, the Hebrews history. You have first to see the point of the story, the significance, which has Jesus and the Hebrews and the early Christians as its subject matter. Then you can make a decision make up your mind. In this way, you will then be able to see the unique influence and status of the scriptures as the instrument for the coming of being of Christian faith, as well as for sustaining and nurturing it. But you have to see the whole story, not a peace here only and then peace there tacked onto it. Particular stories within the scripture must be read in the light of the meaning of the whole story of scripture. The right and proper ground for accepting and believing the scriptures to be authoritative is that they have been the instrument of God's continuing revelation in Jesus Christ to the believer and to the believing community. We may put it in the past tense. This is what has happened in the past, we say. So we can recount it. And then, unfortunately, sometimes, go on to think that it's over and done with. That's what has happened in the past. But that is already a mistake. A more adequate account of the matter is that the experience of God's revelation through the scriptures confirms its authority. It's not something we then establish and for which we give grounds or provide justifying explanations. There will be explanations, of course. In some cases, mistakes occur and we give bad reasons. In others, they occur when we give any reasons. If by giving reasons, we think we can provide a demonstration of the authority of the Bible. It's not a question of proving, 
but rather one of witness. It's not a matter of demonstration, but rather a matter of pointing, so that we use reason not as demonstrative, but simply as providing an explanation which has been confirmed within our own experience. Thank you for listening. <laughs>